Okay. I think we're live, ladies and gentlemen. So, I had a sort of ambitious plan here that I decided I wanted to do a Let's Play series of The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, 4 Oblivion, and 5 Skyrim, excluding Daggerfall because it's very old and uh, I didn't want to have to set it all up on my computer. And I haven't played Daggerfall in 25 years anyway. Uh, but I wanted to do the Elder Scrolls 3, 4, and 5 uh, Let's Play series. I've done a Skyrim Let's Play before, and it was a lot of fun. But I've never done a Morrowind Let's Play, or an Oblivion Let's Play. And honestly, I've never really played much Oblivion, ever. So it would pretty much be a blind playthrough of Oblivion, sort of. And I noticed on YouTube, and especially on Twitch, that there just weren't a whole lot of people playing Morrowind in 2024, right? Which makes sense, it's a 2001 game. Uh, it's not something that people play super often these days. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting... I'll turn the music down here a little bit. Wouldn't it be interesting to do a Let's Play of this brilliant 23-year-old game that uh, a lot of people aren't playing these days and probably haven't thought of for a little while? There's been a lot of mods and stuff that have come out uh, from Morrowind over the past 23 years, and I've downloaded 196 of them <laughs> currently. I am playing on the original Morrowind engine. This is not the Open MW. I, uh, I had some issues with that. I think it is more powerful, but I found it much more difficult to mod. Uh, so I'm playing on the original Morrowind engine, but uh, a lot of mods that have, uh, that have made it very interesting, I think. So my idea was not only to do this uh, Let's Play series of Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim, but to actually do them all on the exact same character. To make the same build for essentially all three games. I think this cutscene has been uh, upscaled also, I'm not sure. They have taken you from the Imperial City's prison. First by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Shaking. Are you okay? Wake up. <laughs> what an iconic introductory video. Um, I believe the voice was Azura. We're going to skip tutorials. Up. We more or less know go. what we're doing. And our name, name is going to be Jacri. What's your name? Well, not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. And uh, Saint Jeeb, one of my favorite lore characters too. Come with me. Um, so the reason I'm going to go with the name Jokri is because this build that I want to do for all three games is an unusual one. I want to do a, a female orc shaman character, which is uh, which is interesting, right? Let's follow the guard up uh, top to Sadenine. In terms of performance, having all these mods on board. Um, see if I can make that slightly brighter. The performance is pretty good. I have an average 60 FPS with vertical sync on, essentially. But um, the original Morrowind engine does struggle sometimes to load assets. So every now and again, when you see that we go into a new area or we, um, we load into an interior, sometimes the FPS will drop from 70 down to, say, 6 for a single frame and then pop back up. Get yourself up on deck and let's keep this as civil as possible. <laughs> so the the face upgrades uh, of the mod on are actually quite good. Now, prisoner. If you've ever seen the original ones, anyway. <laughs> oh, this guy looks a little like Morgan Freeman. So uh, we got Satan in here. Yeah, I mean the water right off the bat looks pretty fantastic, to be honest. The draw distance is pretty far. Oof, blinded myself. <laughs> it's six in the morning, it's too dark for that. 
And then uh, we should see, the, yeah, there's the Silt Strider up there. And then this is uh, Sadenine, the Sadenine Lighthouse up there, which we'll be going to in a second. Um, so, I mean, obviously it's a janky 23-year-old game, but I tried to make it look sort of as good <laughs> as good as we could. This is where they want you. Head down to the dock and we'll show you. You finally arrived, but our records don't show from where. So I'm thinking that we'll do female orc as like a shaman character because I want to do a character that's like light armor, axes, uh, block, you know, for some melee things, but then also uses like lightning magic, like destruction magic, restoration, and alchemy. In the Elder Scrolls lore, the strongholds that the orcs have have usually one huge powerful male leader and he's the only one uh, that has authority to to mate and breed in the stronghold but they usually have an older female leader that serves as kind of a spiritual advisor and a healer for the strongholds who normally specializes in restoration and alchemy cures diseases makes poisons actually and they're referred to a shaman within the stronghold and i thought it would be a relatively interesting let's play especially from morrowind oblivion through to skyrim to play as this sort of archetype because i think it's unusual I don't know if uh, YouTube has any Let's Plays that, <laughs> that have played a character sort of like this. An orc caster is not uh, something that comes to mind generally when you're thinking about the Elder Scrolls series. But it's new, it's different, it's lore friendly. I thought it would be a really cool way to, to play the games and experience the games, even if it's going to be much more difficult trying to make an orc into a caster. So that's what we're going to try to do. And the name Jokri is actually, I believe, a Tibetan word uh, that means shaman. Oh, the original face is rough. Maybe we'll go with this one. Or this one. Maybe we'll go with this one. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. So, orcs do get some interesting bonuses in Morrowind. They get armor, axe, block, heavy armor, and medium armor. We're actually only going to be using three of the five of those. Um, but they do get, this is very interesting, a special ability. So they get 25% resistance to magic, which is going to be very important when we choose our birth sign. And they get the berserk power which in Skyrim becomes extraordinarily strong, but even in Morrowind, and to a lesser extent, Oblivion, is a relatively strong racial. But make no mistake, in Morrowind, the only real casters are generally um, Bretons and Altmer's Hiles, so we're going to be on the back foot here. Great. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. I might have to lower my mouse sensitivity just a tad. It seems very high for this game. Damn, and they're like all the way down too. I don't think the game was made with these super high DPI mouses, <laughs> or mice, in mind. So one thing that I didn't really notice before is the tabards on the wall have like the thief archetype, um, the mage archetype, and the warrior archetype, which kind of foreshadows the fact that you're going to be choosing your class and your skills in this room, which is interesting. Ah uh, yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the, and the choice, choice is, is yours. 20-something <laughs> years later, and I still remember that. So one thing that I'll, um, I'll give you a quick uh, warning on a little bit here is that I have not really played Morrowind in a very long time. Uh, I put probably a thousand hours into this game in 2001 when it released on the original, I think it was Xbox, but... Um, since then, I played it once. I reapproached uh, Morrowind around 2017, so about seven years ago, and I did a pretty long playthrough um, then, but I've played it one time in the last 20 years. So I remember a lot because I played this game a ton back then, but there's a lot I don't remember. I certainly don't want to call this a blind playthrough because I remember a ton of this game, and I feel like as I'm playing through it, I'm going to remember more and more. <laughs> but um, it's been a hot minute, so... We're going to go with, um, probably with combat specialization, because that allows those skills to level a little faster. We're going to go with endurance for sure. 
because we want as much health as possible. And we're going to go with speed just to make movement a little bit easier. Orcs are very slow um, at a baseline, which is tough. Our primary attributes, we're going to want to go with restoration and alchemy. There it is. We're also going to want to take axe. Light armor, because I feel like as an orc shaman, she would want to be armored. Not necessarily heavy armored, but she wouldn't want to be unarmored either. And then probably block. And I think that those are pretty good. Maybe we'd even do destruction instead. I really want her to rely on like lightning magic specifically, which I think is very shamanistic. So here we'll go block. We'll probably go armor so we can repair our stuff. We're going to go alteration. Acrobatics, probably. And enchant, I think, is fine. And then I wonder if we can uh, rename this. Or if we're always just going to be Adventurer. It looks like it'll just be Adventurer. <laughs> I was wondering if uh, I could I could edit this, but it doesn't look like this is clickable, which is fine. Okay, so I think that's a, a good place to start for our character. Very good. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? So here, I would normally take something like the Lady. Personality and Endurance, 25 points apiece, is insane. That's insanely strong. We would start with 85 Endurance if I took this. And um, female orcs actually have the lowest personality in the entire game. I think we start with 25. Um, so the Lady would help us immensely. And the Warrior, too, at the bottom, um, giving us Fortify Attack 10 points, which for the early game especially is immense. I cannot overstate how strong that is. However, we're going to make a very unusual decision here, and I think we're going to go with the Apprentice, because we're making an Orc caster, and our mana pool is already absolutely microscopic, because we're not a Breton or a High Elf. Um, I think we need something that extends our mana pool, right? We'll end up with the Endurance and the Personality. As we level, we'll be able to get those primary attributes, we'll be able to get those to 100 eventually. Um, that means we have a slower start, but eventually that birth sign isn't going to matter, right? Ten hours into the game, the lady sign is now doing nothing for us, whereas the apprentice is giving us Majika that we could not get any other way. Um, there is no way to go above 100 max Majika without being a Breton, a High Elf, or one of these birth signs. Now, the weakness to Majika 50% sucks. Um, that's a big deal. Some of the most dangerous attacks in the Elder Scrolls, not just Morrowind, are magic attacks. But, remember, orcs have that 25% passive resistance to magic. So this is actually only a 25% weakness, which I think is justifiable for having one and a half times the mana pool. And we'll be getting a ring pretty early into the run, hopefully, that compensates for that 25% weakness even. So, I think we go with the Apprentice even though I'm probably the first orc in the history of Morrowind to go with the Apprentice bird sign. Elfborn <laughs> is the name of the bird sign. Um, I think even in the lore, the orcs were elves, right, originally? Like the Falmer? Interesting. Now, before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. So, Jacri, orc, adventurer, the apprentice. So, this is one of the reasons I think female orc works really well with this archetype. Look at these starting stats. This is actually really competitive. 45 strength, 40 intellect, 45 willpower. My agility is pretty low at 35. Speed is 40, which is decent. Endurance is a whopping 65 without taking any birth sign that increases governing attributes. Um, and then our poor personality is all the way down there at 25, which we're going to have to rectify pretty quickly. Another thing that's important is our axe skill here is starting at 40. And in Morrowind, you never want to start with a damage ability less than 40, or you're just not going to hit anything at all. Um, so that works out pretty well for us, I think. Um, I think this is this is the start, and I'd, I'd like to bring this character through all three games. So, we'll see what happens there. Show your papers to the captain when you exit to get your release fee. Nice. So, in classic, in classic Morrowind fashion, we have to do it, right? 
I, I, I don't know. If you know anything about Morrowind, you're probably wondering if I'm going to do it. I think we're going to do it. <laughs> we steal the platter. We drop it on the floor. He comes and chastises us. <laughs> I might uh, download a mod real quick, too, that, um, that increases this, maybe. That increases the size, so that maybe you guys can see a little bit easier. Because that font is really small. So I think for the next episode, maybe, um, I'll see if I can download a mod where you guys could read this without squinting. But it says, what are you doing? We'll let your actions go for now, but once you're released, stuff like that will get you arrested. <laughs> so the cool thing about that is that he doesn't take it out of our inventory because it's not technically in our inventory. So we can just pick it right up off the ground and we can mosey right on out of here. Continue through to the next building <laughs> the and it's worth a ton. It's a lot of really good starting money. Um... We need that lockpick. We're going to take all the silver stuff. We're going to rob these guys blind. The flint is worth a fortune, too. We're going to take the iron dagger and equip that, even though we're probably not going to use it. I think our orc turned out okay, right? She looks alright. I'm sorry, my, uh, my camera is covering some of our base stats, but that's okay. Um, and one of the one of the perks of playing on an ultra wide, I think I'm, I'm downscaling the resolution of the stream to um, 1920 by 1080. But I'm actually playing on a huge, huge, huge curved monitor here, and I can get uh, I can get all the stuff right on the monitor, right? So that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, I think our our orc turned out looking okay-ish. She's not as grotesque as you might think a female orc would be in this game. We also started with two spells as well, Firebite and Hearth Heal. Hearth Heal is actually really nice, and we have a 75% chance to cast it, which is insane. We only have 52 health, um, so this is a really good option for us. We're also going to maybe pick this, I don't know, we're going to take that, we're going to take that, we're going to take this, yeah, we can pick that. Wow, that's so old school. I have to put the pick in my hand, and then I have to ready the pick, and then I have to get in range. Wow. Maybe I should have saved scummed. <laughs> wow. Okay for the easiest lock in the entire game. Uh, that was a substantial amount of work. <laughs> Alright. Um, crab meat actually has restore fatigue on it, which we could make a... Uh, we could make a potion out of. Maybe later. When we start doing alchemy. Oh, that's bright. That's so pale. Uh, and there's Fargoth's Ring. Engraved Ring of Healing. Cool. Your papers, please. Look how short he is. Because I'm an orc, I guess. He looks like a... Looks like Quentin Tarantino with an extra chromosome. Sort of. I like the armor, though, that they added to him. It's kind of nice. So, one of the things for this Let's Play is that... Um, and you guys are going to have to tell me what you think is I'm thinking maybe doing a little less commentary this time obviously it's the beginning of the game so I'm explaining a lot but I think as we go forward I would like the game more to speak for itself um, but just let me know in any kind of uh, comments or something if you'd like a quieter experience <laughs> you like no cam no commentary just just play the game or if you want the webcam and the commentary let me know but I'm gonna try to uh, thread the needle and and do a little bit of a little bit of both without being overbearing yeah, I think our character turned out okay for Morrowind. She's alright. Got a bit of an underbite. Alright, let's talk to Celis Gravius. First, let me take your identification papers. Thank you. Word of your arrival only reached me yesterday. I am Celis Gravius, but my background is not important. I'm here to welcome you to Morrowind. Yes, you're in Morrowind. I don't know why you're here. 
or why you were released from prison and shipped here, but your authorization comes directly from Emperor Uriel Septim VII himself. And I don't need to know any more than that. When you leave this office, you are free. But before you go, I have instructions on your duties. Instructions from the Emperor himself. This package came with the news of your arrival. You are to take it to Caius Casatus in the town of Balmora. Ask for Caius, they'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor himself. I also have a letter for you. And a dispersal in your name. 87 gold. So the Emperor's uh, really breaking the bank there. <laughs> you think he could have given us a little bit more money to start the game with, but okay, thank you, Emperor. Caius Casatus is a pretty cool dude. So we're going to click on this, see if we can get more information. And we cannot. Okay, so we're going to say goodbye. We're going to do one more cheeky thing while we're here. It's actually the same trick that we did earlier with the platter. I want to save, though. Oh, it won't let me save. Alright, we're going to have to be real careful then. So there is a key here that says warehouse key on it. And there's a very lucrative warehouse right here in Sedanin, and I want to loot it for early game gold, which we are desperately going to need. But if I steal it, he's going to see me, and he's going to take it from me. You've stolen for the last time. You've stolen for the last time. So we're going to drop that on the ground. He's going to open dialog box with us. He's going to turn around, and then we're going to pick the key back up. And he doesn't give a shit, and we're going to walk away. <laughs> it's a little cheeky. <laughs> it's a little cheeky. Uh, this should be Fargoth here. If it your is. clothes are any indication, I take it you're a herder. What the fuck? Is Fargoth spitting fire on me? Oh, <laughs> already? Holy shit! Are you the one that the boat dropped off? Odd to see a boat arrive at this time of day. Hope the Imperials treated you okay. I swear they took my ring. I swear one of the guards has it. I had it last week before their weekly Let Shake Down Fargoth ritual. An engraved healing ring. Family heirloom of mine. You haven't seen it, have you? And I can say, uh, no, I haven't. Or I can say, yes, I found it. Here, take it. And there's a couple reasons we want to give Fargoth the ring. <laughs> Even though we will be getting it back. The first is because it will raise the disposition with both Fargoth and the innkeeper in there, who we want to sell a bunch of stuff to. Also, we can steal it back in a quest we're about to do. So, You found it! Amazing! Thank you, thank you. You are now my favorite friend. I'll be sure to tell the others, especially my friend Ariel, who runs the trade house here. Go see him. He'll be happy to see you now. And that's precisely why we give Fargoth his ring. I remember the beginning of Morrowind very well, because it's the beginning of the game, and whenever you make a new character, you go through this whole process, right? As we get further into the game, I'm going to remember less and less of it, but... Yeah, the game looks pretty good. Is that a slaughterfish swimming around? That's wild. That the water is clear enough that you can see it. And it looks like there's a tomb over there. I think there's a quest involving that tomb here, um, in Sadenine. I think it has to do with like some tax records or something, but I don't really remember. We're not going to be making a beeline for it anyway. Um, so let's come in here to the trade house. We're going to save real quick, depending on how this goes. New save game, Jacquerie. There we go. And we're going to try to unload some things onto this guy. Barter. Alright, so this is our inventory here which we can expand a little bit in the bartering menu, maybe up to the camera a bit. And then this is the inventory for the trader we're with. We'll move this a little bit too. Morrowind is very modular when it comes to the user interface, which has always been nice. And we're going to sell a bunch of this crap we stole. I don't know where I got an exclusive water breathing potion. Do not sell the Caius Casadas quest items because the game, and this is this is a theme throughout Morrowind. This game does not hold your hand. It will let you break your game. 
completely. It will allow you to do that. More modern games have stops, they have, uh, they have safety features built in that don't allow you to sell critical main quest items or kill quit uh, critical quest givers. Uh, but Morrowind does not give a shit. This was made in 2001, where, where men were men and women were too. Um, <laughs> if you sell the package for Kai's Casadas, you're just screwed. You're screwed. The game is over for you. Or at least the main quest is. Uh, so don't do that. It's a funny part of Morrowind. Is that there's definitely no hand holding here. Let's sell all this silver stuff we stole. The limeware platter, that's a big one. We're gonna keep that warehouse key. And we can buy a few things from him. If we want to. Um, he has some some chitin armor that I think we should buy just so that we can have a little bit of armor going into the early game it's kind of expensive but I think it's totally worth it and we're going to be glad we did it so we're going to Haggle this up to 530 and see if he takes it. He did. His disposition is a whopping 78 for this. We're also going to need some spells, although I don't think he has anything super important for us. Resist Magicka is actually fairly important. Uh, Spark is pretty important, too. We'll grab them both. Okay. That wasn't too painful. Let's put on some of this early gear. <laughs> we're, we're looking Greetings to you, out or hit the road. pretty janky. This guy here has a quest for us. Another thing uh, for Morwind is that uh, there's no indication in the game who has quests for you and who doesn't. <laughs> you just kind of have to talk to everybody. Right now, like I said, this is the beginning of the game, so I'm familiar with it. But uh, as we get a little further on, I'm not going to know who has quests. I do have this. Um, it is... The Morwind Prophecies, a Prima Strategy Guide. So I bought this, and I've actually um, I've gone through it a little bit, and I wrote down some items that we're looking for in the uh, in the front of the cover. So I did look through the strategy guide a little bit just to see where we're going. But um, yeah, this is a really cool like 400-page strategy guide made by Prima, and I actually had one of these back in like 2001 when the game originally released, and I used it all the time. It was fantastic. So instead of like googling things, which I think is a little cheap, um, I want to use the book, and we can make sure that we're not missing quests and stuff like that. So I'd recommend that. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned. I'm an old guy. I got a lot of gray in my beard. <laughs> look at uh, look at Hriskar Flatfoot here. He's got a pretty nice face with the mods that I have on. That's Wait not terrible. Gods, you tourists are a nuisance. Wow, he talks shit too. It's one of the reasons everybody's talking such fierce shit is because our personality is so low. Um, you can't see it because well, I can move it a little bit. But uh, here's my stats, right? And you can see that personality right there is 25. So people freaking hate us. They hate us, like, big time. Oh, crap. I gotta move it back. <laughs> but having, uh, having a low personality in this game is brutal. Brutal. Okay, so let's talk to Friskar here. You look like you could use a friend, Outlander. Perhaps I could be your friend. I'd like to help... I'd like you to help me recover some gold. Ooh. That's right. See, I had a bad run of luck playing nine holes and lost a bit of money. Normally, I'd be fine. We can usually keep some gold in our pockets just from the money the locals pay us for protection. <laughs> but I know some of them are holding out on me, especially that little fetcher Fargoth. He's come up late the past couple of weeks when I've shaken him down. I know he's stashing it somewhere. I'd like you to find Fargoth's hiding place. I know the little fetcher's got one somewhere in town, just not sure where. I've already gone through his whole house, so I know he's not hiding it in there. I'd like you to find out where he's stashing his gold. If you can, I'll give you a share of the wealth. So we go, yes, I'll do it. Fuck Fargoth. Excellent. Here's what I want you to do. I'm not sure where he goes, but I know he wanders around town at night. 
watch his movements. The best vantage point is on top of the lighthouse south of town. That will give you a nice view of all of Sadenine. If you keep an eye on where he goes, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out where he's hiding the gold. And this is another thing that I really like about Morwood. There are no quest markers. There's no uh, arrow on top of your head telling you where to go, right? You have to use your journal and read. Um, I should watch him at night. I'm not supposed to approach him at any time. I should then retrace his footsteps and find out where he's hidden the money, right? Uh, so your journal, more or less, is going to give you all the information you need to complete these quests. It's not modern, right? Modern games hold your hand the whole time. They tell you exactly where to go, and Morwen doesn't do that, which is one of the reasons I think it's such a fantastic game. Oof, jeez, that is... that is brutal. I gotta tone the brightness down a little bit. It's like I'm outside. <laughs> so while we're here, also you'll notice in the bottom left of the screen, if you can see it, it is kind of small, that I have a little fatigue bar that's actually shrinking as I run. Fatigue is super important in Morland. I want some mushrooms. There we go. Which one is this one? Luminous Rosala. Nice. That's a mud crab. That's not what we want. So what we want to do is we want to get up here, because if I recall, there's a really powerful starting weapon in this tree stump. I can kind of see it from here. Let's see if we can make the jump. That's going to be tough. We can. Iron Shard Axe. Oh, baby. Boom. Iron Shard Axe. Axe two-handed. Chop 1 to 32. And cast when strikes, frost damage, 0 to 7 points. Not bad. Not a bad start. And there's one more mushroom I think we need. Violet Capricornus or something? Is it this one? Yeah, Violet Coprinus. That's it. Take all. We got all our mushrooms. Let's see if we can kill this mud crab. Let's see if he's going to kill us. Boom. One shot. He's dead. <laughs> we we win. Axe versus crab. Axe wins. I think this is a mod that adds little tiny endemic creatures. Man, it's surprisingly pretty. This is not the Morrowind I remember. That's for sure. Lock level 25. We're not quite there yet. In fact, the little level 1 lock from inside the census and excise office kicked our ass, so we're not going to try a level 25 lock. What do we got here? We got some grief. Value is 30, so we will sell that. And then we got the rates wedding dowry. Value 300. And we got some unarmored skill by reading it. Even better. Alright, so this is a good vantage point. We're up on top of the lighthouse. These little birds that have been added, which is pretty cool. We can see the entire little town of Sadenine. And I say we wait right here until maybe... 10 o'clock. So it's 3 p.m. right now, so we're going to wait 7 hours. And see if we can find Fargoth sneaking. Oh, there he is. Look at this sneak. Look at this walk. He's like... <laughs> like a cartoon character. 
I guess he is a cartoon character. Where are you going, Fargoth? I'm having a delicious cup of coffee this morning. I think this is from a company called Bones. They make really good stuff. I get the whole beans, grind it up. If I'm not being lazy, I French press it, but I was lazy this morning. I just worked a 12 hour overnight shift at work, so I don't get home until about 6 a.m. Oh. It's that tree stump. So since I didn't want to uh, go through the whole process of French pressing my coffee this morning, I just uh, I brewed it the regular way, but it's still delicious. A little bit of cream, a little bit of raw cane sugar, and good to go. Hmm. Wow, look at this guy. Holy crap, that's really pretty. Whoa! There's like a whole galaxy up there. That's really pretty. Whoa! There's like an aurora borealis here, and then this massive moon. That's pretty cool. That's really pretty, holy shit. Digging it. Alright, let's see what Fargoth left in this hiding spot. You gotta feel a little bad for Fargoth, right? Maybe not. I don't know. I feel a little bad for Fargoth. There it is. So we got a lockpick, we got an engraved ring of healing, and we got a whopping 300 gold. We're gonna take all that. We're gonna come back to the... actually, before we go to the inn... Well, let's check. I have something I want to check anyway. I want to see how much money the trader has left before I go to the warehouse, because if we cleaned her out already... Barter. Yeah, he has 386, but I guess that's not terrible. We can sell this iron dagger. We can sell our clothes that we don't need. We can sell the grief. And we can sell the book. And that all sells for about 170 once I haggle him up a little bit. He refused it. Okay. He took 168 for it. Good enough. So now he doesn't have a whole lot of gold left. And we have... Actually, we have a thousand gold dead even. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. I think we're almost looking a little shaman already, to be honest. Kind of happy with the way the character's turning out. Let's turn this quest in. He's going to take a lot of that gold from Fargoth. And our journal was updated. I found Fargoth's hidden stash. He keeps it in a hollow tree stump in a muck pond in town. Briscar was grateful that I found the money that Fargoth had been hiding. He rewarded me with some gold and told me I could keep anything else I found beside the money. So we got to keep the ring, which is pretty cool, and we can go ahead and equip that. And now that is in our little magic uh, area here. So we can select it, and whenever we'd like, we can, uh, we can heal ourselves with it. It's a really shitty heal. <laughs> One to five points, and I can only cast it five times. So... Um, not fantastic, but hey, what are you going to do? I do not recall seeing you here before. Is this your first visit to Sadenine? Yes, I only lately arrived in Vardenfell. No, it is just I had not the pleasure of meeting you during my last visit, and no, I had no reason to speak with you until now. I'll say that we just arrived, because we did. So we can still steal some stuff. Um, I suppose out of the warehouse, and then we can just sell it to a vendor in Balmora where we're headed. Yeah, that is gorgeous, guys. Very nice. With the soft glow from the, uh, from the lighthouse. It's like an ASMR, almost. You can just sit here and chill. Have your coffee. <laughs> Alright. Um, there are some other quests that we could do in Sadenin. I remember there's one about a murder and some tax reports, but I'm kind of in a, a rush to get to Balmora to really start all that. There we 
didn't go. We're going to definitely save because this could go really poorly for us. We're going to steal anything out of here we can. Oh, that's going to be really heavy though. Is that moon sugar? Ooh. It's worth a lot, but it's illegal. Then again, so is all this theft. <laughs> Fur. Interesting. Gotta make sure nobody's coming and gonna see us. Iron spear, iron longsword. There's a lot of really good starter weapons here. Hey, buddy, I wasn't doing anything uh, nefarious. I was just chilling. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. I'm getting stuck on some pixels. That'll probably be a common occurrence. What else we got? We got Imperial Steel. It's gonna get heavy. I don't know if I have the encumbrance for all of this. We can take the Moon Sugar. Oh, there's lots of Moon Sugar. Here's some gold. I guess the arrows are worth taking. I'd like to mention that thievery isn't really part of Jacri's roleplay. <laughs> but <laughs> Daddy needs a new pair of shoes, so Skuma. Wow, 500 gold each um, for these, if we can find somebody that's willing to take them off our hands. Which I think we can. If we want to go back to the... Oh, I didn't even know he comes up the stairs. Jeez, we lucked out a little bit. If we go back to the trader at the trade house in Sadenine, she's not going to do business with us because of the drugs in our possession. So <laughs> we're going to have to drop them on the floor first. Which uh, absolves us of any guilt. As long as the drugs are not in our inventory, they don't care. So if I take the drugs and I slam it down on her counter, she'll do business with me. But if I have them hidden in my pockets, she will not do business with me. So let's go ahead and dispose of the evidence. And then uh, the two skooma here. Definitely not drugs there. Hello. I hope you won't take too much of my time. Well, man, everybody hates us. Our personality needs some help, like, immediately. Let's get all these arrows out of here. Yeah, that's worth 122 gold. That's fantastic. What's some of the heavier stuff? This is really heavy. 29 pounds? Yeah. And then this is 17 pounds? But they're not going to give me very much for it. There we go. All right. I don't have a lot of patience for questions, Outlander. We did it. We um we got about as much gold as we're gonna get out of Sadenine. One thousand twenty-five, and we have quite a lot of other crap in our inventory that we can sell once we get wherever we're going. Um, wonder. This is an armor rating of five. Ours is an armor rating of ten. So the Chitin's actually much stronger armor than the fur. That's interesting. So, I don't normally like traveling at night, and uh, it's midnight, but it seems bright enough. I almost feel like the brightness of the game is a little too high. I feel like nighttime should be darker than this, and I feel like daytime is absolutely blinding me. So I might go into some of the uh, the visual settings after this, uh, this episode, and uh, turn up the brightness a little bit. So we got Bungler's Bane, we got Haifa Fascia, we got Luminous Rosala, and we got Violet Coprinius. So we have the four mushrooms we need. Next, what I'd like to do is go and grab four flowers that we're also going to need, since we're out here anyway. I also want to discover whatever this is, just so we can put it on our map. I think that's how that works. Yeah, Cavern Door to add a... Adamasartus. So 
so it doesn't put it on our map there, but maybe if we were to go to local map, it does. World map. Huh. I guess it doesn't work like Skyrim, where you uh, just discover an area and it just puts it on your map. That's fine. In the bottom left, I might even try to find a, a mod for this too, if I can find one, but the, the UI is very small, right? In terms of our health and mana and stamina and, and everything. It's just in, it's in this little, I guess it's down for you, it's down here. Yes, right down there. <laughs> it's just so tiny. Um, I'm going to see if I can maybe find a way to blow that up a little bit. But anyway, you can see that our stamina is pretty much empty, which decreases, that's... That's quite phallic. <laughs> but uh, uh, your stamina dictates the effectiveness of pretty much every action in Morrowind, which is a cool mechanic. It's like an older RPG mechanic. Um, and that's every action. Casting spells is, is less effective, and you're less likely to successfully cast if your stamina is low. Swinging your weapon, of course, and the damage that you deal with your weapon, your chance to block. Um, but also any kind of interactions you have with other players. So when you want to buy or sell items, if your stamina is depleted, um, you're, you're less effective. There's an enemy here. Uh, are they called Quama Foragers or something? I forget the name of these little guys. Hit him. Ooh. Got him. They're called Quama Foragers. Nailed it. My, uh old man brain is working out for me. I'm gonna rest for one hour. And that fully heals me, and it gives me all my stamina back. And we're gonna run down... Wow, this is really pretty. This looks fantastic. Like, look at how dense the foliage and stuff is. Wow. Um, we're gonna grab stone flower petals, I believe. I think that's what these are. Willow flower. No, it's not. But we need this anyway. What's this one called? Black Anther? I don't know if we need that, but we're gonna take it, just in case. I know there's a very early Mage's Guild quest that requires you to grab um, mushrooms and flowers, so we might as well grab them while we're out here. Comberry has Restore Majika, which is fucking huge. It's immense for us. We're gonna need all the Comberries we can get. Oh, Heather. Heather looks great! I love the model that they, they did for this. Cute. Alright. We still need the stone flower petals. Is that this? Gold canet? No, but I think gold canet's important. What does this do that we know of? Drain health and burden. Hmm. Bless me. <laughs> it's allergy season. You should see my car outside, it's covered in pollen. What is this one? Stone flower. We got it, we nailed it. We found it at long last. Let's take all this golden can if we can. I don't know if the individual heads have a chance to have them, or if it's just the main flower body. To be honest. If we could find more Comberry, that would be great. There is two more trees. Let's just grab those, and then we'll head back to the Silt Strider and make our way to Balmor. But this Comberry is going to be so integral um, to us making Restore Mana Potions that whenever we see this, we really need to grab it. I don't recall what other ingredients go into Restore Mana Potions. I believe Frost Salts and maybe Emeralds but those are both very rare and very expensive. So I'm hoping there's an easy ingredient that does restore Majika. And I just I, I just don't know what that is. We'll, we'll figure it out. Worst case scenario, we can, uh, we can open the book. <laughs> and I'm sure the book has a list of ingredients and uh, their, their spell effects. What's the button for third person? Oh, this is the button for third person. Yeah, I don't know. I think we're looking a little, a little shaman-y, especially with our... Do we run faster with the axe out? I 
I think we might. Is that a thing? Huh. Also, did I get lost? Because I don't remember there being a tomb up here. What is this tomb? Oh, there's combat. <laughs> This is the Androno Ancestral Tomb. I mean, I guess we could look it up real quick. <laughs> There's gotta be a, um... Is there a, uh, a glossary in here? There isn't a glossary, or is there? There's not. There's no glossary. Interesting. So we'd have to go by... We'd have to go by the map, which I don't really want to do, to be honest. But just for funsies, let's look at something real quick. That's Alderoon. Oh my god, these maps are insane. Sadrith Mora. We want kind of the Satanine area. That's the Vivek area. Fallfell area. So it's got to be here. Androno Family Tomb, right? Androno Ancestral Tomb. In the main quest, you'll recover the skull of Androno from this large and dangerous crypt. Ho ho ho. So that is a main quest location that has a skull in it we're going to need. Alright. Large and dangerous crypt. Well, I'm glad our weak-ass level 1 shaman isn't going to go in there. <laughs> get brought to Pound Town. Alright, so let's go back up to the Silt Strider, and we should be able to fast travel to Balmora. One of the best things, in my opinion, about Morwent is that there is really no fast travel options. You can't just open your map and find a location you've discovered and just warp right to it like you can with Skyrim. There are ways to fast travel in the game, but they're two set locations, mostly cities. You have the Silt Striders, and then you have uh, boats that take you around. There are a couple magical means of travel. There is Divine Intervention, which brings you to shrines, and All Mystery Intervention, which I bring, uh, I believe brings you to temples. And then as soon as we can get it, we need to get the Mark and Recall spells, and that allows us to go to specific places, which is really cool. Um, but fast travel isn't really a thing in Morwind. There's just a little bit of travel between uh, cities for convenience. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to ride the Silk Striders. Where would you like to go? Oh, she's cute. Alright, travel. Balmora, 14 gold pieces. Oof. Lady. You're breaking the bank. Where would you like to go? Ho 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 ho. Man, it's bright. Is there, is there settings? Video? View distance? Gamma correction? Yeah, can we do that? Is that a thing? That d I, I feel like that didn't. I feel like that didn't do anything. I feel like I'm still being blinded. Anyway, this is Balmora. Hello, Selville, Sarloth. Oh, you can see uh, in the in the distance right up there. You can see a dwarven ruin actually, because our draw distance is just so wide. That's wild. Uh, but Balmora is probably my favorite city in Morrowind, and I know it doesn't look like much, but trust me, it's fucking awesome. You can do everything you want to in Balmora. Every vendor, every trader, every trainer you could possibly imagine is right here in this town. So we're going to a guy named Caius Casadas, and I happen to know where he lives. Because like I said, I, I know the early game of Morrowind pretty well. We're going to have to get a couple quests deep before I'm going to get lost. Wow, look at that. You can see the rain dropping onto the water. That's a nice touch. Onto the canal. Very nice touch. I dig it. The South Wall Corner Club. I think that's the Thieves Guild, if I recall. Estius Hanatophilus' house. I 
think uh, Caius is right here. That is. Caius Casatus' house. Oh, ho, ho, my goodness. Look at that guy. Moments. He says I only have a few moments, but I, I'm getting the impression he has a lot more than a few moments. Also, look at the... <laughs> Look at the drug paraphernalia. He's got a skooma pipe and a fucking spoon to freebase it. That's funny. And he's got moon sugar all around. And, like, empty bottles. Bro, do you need help? Do you need, like, an intervention? My, <laughs> my dude. And I like how his shirt is, <laughs> is here. It's nice and folded up, giving the impression he rarely wears it. Matthew McConaughey over here. But hey, if I was 75 and I was this ripped, I'd probably uh, walk around without a shirt, too. Alright, Caius. What? Yes, I'm Caius Casadas. But what do you mean you were told to report to me? What are you talking about? So you say your name is Jacri, and you've been told to report to me and deliver a package. Perhaps you'll let me look at it. Yes, very interesting. So it says here the Emperor wants me to make you a novice in the Blades, and that means you'll be following my orders. Are you ready to follow my orders, Chakri? And I say, yes. And he says, good. Welcome to the service. <laughs> now you belong to the Blades. That was easy. We're the Emperor's eyes and ears in the provinces. You can use my bed if you need to rest, but leave my personal stuff alone unless I say otherwise, like your drug paraphernalia. If you like, you can improve your modest skills with our Blades Trainers, or if you're in a hurry, I can give you orders right away. But don't forget to visit the Blades Trainers. So there's a couple trainers and we are going to be using them. It's Rithleen, Tymerlin, Nine Toes, and then in Caldera there's Serae and Leoran, and in Alderun there's a couple of uh, trainers as well. And they'll give you a really good deal on training. Their disposition is much higher with you than most people are, because um, you're part of their faction, you're a blade now, and Caius Casatus is essentially vouching for you. So we're going to be utilizing that. But we're going to go ahead and hit orders here. First thing, Pilgrim, you're new, and you look it. Here's 200 drakes. Go get yourself a decent weapon, or armor, or a spell. And a second thing, you need a cover identity. Around here, freelance adventurer is a common profession. Sign in with the Fighters Guild, or the Mages Guild, or the Imperial Cult, or the Imperial Legion. Advance in the ranks, gain skill and experience, or go out on your own. Look for freelance work, or trouble. Then, when you're ready, come back, and I'll have orders for you. And I think this is super cool how Morwen does this, because they're essentially telling you, you are dog shit right now. <laughs> you're level one, you have no health, you can't hit anything with your weapon, you're useless to me. Um, use our trainers, join one of the factions, go through the factions, level up, get to level 5, get to level 10, get to level 15, become comfortable with your character, and then come back and start the main quest. And that is what we are going to be doing. Um, we're going to probably be joining the Mages Guild first. And then we're probably going to be doing all of them, but we'll start with the Mages Guild. Normally in any Elder Scrolls game, it's the Mages Guild that I begin first. It's uh, it's the Mages Guild that offers spell making and things like that. So in Oblivion and Skyrim, we'll probably be doing that as well. All right, we got pretty far for our first episode here, and I think this is a good place to stop and um, take a break, make another cup of coffee, and we can come back. And I think for the next episode, we can uh, we can start on the Mages Guild. We've already done a lot of the the legwork because we got all the mushrooms and flowers that we need while we were headed here. Um, and then we can we can go from there. Maybe we can get, you know, six or seven of the Mages Guild quests done next episode, and then uh, and then keep going. So thank you for joining me, guys. If you have any questions, just uh, slap them down in the YouTube comments. I am technically streaming this, but. Uh, I stream at weird hours because I work overnights, so normally when I'm streaming it's real early in the morning at 6, 7 a.m., and that's just not when people are watching Twitch, so you probably won't catch me live. But um, if you want to watch the Let's Play on YouTube, and, you, and that's how you're watching it, then uh, you can interact with me in the comments, and I'll either shoot you back a comment or I'll, I'll mention it in the next video if I can. And uh, if you guys are watching this in the future, <laughs> thanks for thanks for joining me.
it's uh it's april 1st i think 2024 now so maybe you'll be watching this five years from now six years from now i'm wondering if you're watching this in the future if the elder scroll 6 has come out yet so you can put that down in the comments too say hey it's 2027 and no the elder scroll 6 has not come out yet <laughs> let me know thanks guys and i'll catch you on the next episode